So hello everyone and welcome to the fourth and the final webinar of Nomadic's webinar series uh, Model Based Systems Engineering from Theory to Best Practices. Uh, today's webinar will cover the usage of SysML and MAP in different systems engineering. The presenter is going to describe how to adapt modeling in the organization for building high value models. To, to be more precise, during the presentation you will learn about enterprise architecture frameworks, uh, NAV framework and views, functional, logical and physical views, uh, modeling system with NAV framework, system compliance mode in Cameo enterprise architecture, and best practices from our clients. Uh, the session will be hosted by Dr. Ilona Bisikirska. OMG certified UML, UML systems modeling and BPMN professional. Her major expertise areas are model-based enterprise architecture solutions and business process modeling techniques. Lina is the manager of Kamea Enterprise Architecture, one of the main products of Nomadge. She also actively participates in educational and consultancy activities. Lina is an author of multiple articles and speaker in multiple conferences. If you have any questions during this presentation, write them in the chat more directly. Uh, after the presentation, Lena will review the questions and answer some of them uh, live here. Our questions, uh, other questions will be answered later and presented together with the video link of the recorded webinar. Uh, the presentation will approximately take 45 minutes and the question and answer session about 15. So, welcome Lena. I see she's ready to start. <laughs> okay. Hello everybody. Uh, thank you Aisha for introduction. And it's great to see you, so many of you here. And I know that you already heard a lot of information about SysML. But today I want to talk about the infrastructure that is necessary when you want to collect, model, and manage information in the MBSC projects. So today I will have four main topics. The first topic is dedicated for architectural framework as a key element in MBSC success. Then I will talk about main benefits that you can get from the integration of SysML and enterprise architecture. And in live demo, I will show you how to integrate SysML and enterprise architecture framework in two possible ways. And of course, I will show more benefits how to use this integration. The last part will be dedicated for your questions and answers. So I believe we can start the first topic. And the first topic is about MBSC. I believe that we all agree that MBSC is the future of system engineering. And I believe that's why we're here. But MBSC, it's not only model. It's also about modeling. The process, how we create them. Of course, we know that the main benefits that we can get from modeling is improved communication, managed complexity, provided views of system from multiple perspectives, reuse of information. But even if sounds promising, success does not com come so simply and easily and because there are much more about modeling. So can we help you to improve your projects? Yes, but the first we have to understand that SysML is simply a modeling language. We can build sentences, grammar, add some semantics. However, not pragmatics. The ways in which context contributes to meaning. The modeling language is just a language and must be combined with the methodology how to use it if we want to get the best value from our projects. Even we have sophisticated tools like SysML, it's not yet a recipe for success. If we do not know how to use them, we will spend uh, at the end in the house. So, uh, can we find a better solution? Yes. If you are from the company listed below, we can help you to improve your projects. For example, if you are developing products based on systems engineering, or you are integrating systems in a cross-functional team, maybe you are a contractor or subcontractor in your project. All the time you should get similar questions. How to structure the model? What views to build? Which artifacts to deliver? 
and in what sequence. Once we are not alone in the project, it is necessary to consider the possibility of the enterprise architecture. The additional information, for example, organization structure, standards, glossary, requirements, should be classified and added in the project. Every company deals with the same issues differently. Some of them are using defense architecture frameworks like DODAF, MODAF, NAF. Some of them are using MBSC methods like OOSM, Harmony, SysMode, or similar. Our best experience is based on UPDM modeling language. It supports three main architectural frameworks, DODAF, MODAF, and NAF. And now we are waiting for the new UPDM 3.0. It will come at the end of the next year. And it will have a lot of improvements that will simplify the enterprise architecture modeling. Why, why enterprise architecture is useful? Because it contains uh, conventions, principles, best practices, also a set of views and viewpoints, uh, presentation artifacts, and ontology. How can we use that in our project? Here you can see the new phase of NAV4 project and the structure. There is a new way how these views are put together in the grid more like Zachman Primo. If you are interested, uh, you may find more information in NAV.org. As you may see here, we have different perspectives. First, we can analyze enterprise using top-down principles from concepts to logic and physical resources views, adding services, deployed resources, metadata. But at the same time, we can see the same picture from different perspectives. We can separate structural information from behavioral, like structure, information, constraints, processes, phase. Do we always need all these aspects? No. It depends on your role, on your project, on your organization. Even having a framework, it's not yet enough. We need to know how to integrate this framework with SysML projects. So, here we have our architecture framework viewpoints that fit together. First, we start from defining concepts and its capabilities. We define from one to many scenarios how we expect our system to work and how it interacts with the environment. And finally, we we'll provide multiple uh, designs for each scenario. Then we perform trade-offs to pick the best alternative. And what I want to say that this uh, structure is the same for all UPDM frameworks. It's, for, it's the same for Dora, Mora, and now as well. But what we have when we have Susama, it changes this level. It changes our capability configurations, and we can choose two possible ways to use SysML modeling in UPDM projects. The first possible way to use SysML is to use SysML compliance mode. If we want to model systems in the same project, in the same UPDM project, we, want, we have to turn off the SysML compliance mode. It means that our enterprise architecture diagrams, elements, will be converted to SysML elements and diagrams. At the same time, they will have all UPDM and SysML properties. We are not new in modeling, so we are applying two stereotypes for the same time. In such case, you can get functionality from UPDM and from SysML as well. Here you may create UPDM diagrams or you may use SysML ones. Also you will have all the additional functionality that comes from SysML, for example, integrations with other tools, simulations, and similar. The compliance mode ensures that the working process will be smooth and consistent. But if you have different workflow, for example, like in the defense sector, the second way is to have a separate project. The common workflow is that contracting authority defines capability requirements as well as operating scenarios. And contractor or several contractors provide multiple alternatives for solution designs. Contractor performs trade-offs 
analysis and identify the best alternative. The line between a uh, contractor and subcontractor can vary or in some projects completely disappear. So what can we do in such case? In such case, we can choose the second way of integration. In this way, SAMA is stored as a separate project. For example, we already have capabilities, goals, organization structure in the PDM project. So we can model system separately. So every system will have its own SSML project. I will show you later in detail how to do that in our live demo. But the main point, when we have a separate SSML project, we cannot forget the traceability. Traceability to our main requirements, uh, capabilities in our UPDM project. In such case, um, the main point is to trace blocks in SSML the systems, the capability configurations or resource artifacts in UPDM. Here we can use standard system relationships such as allocate, satisfy, trace, as you can see here in the example. The information that comes from contracting authority is added to the SysML project as a shared project. And in such case it is uh, in a read-only mode because we cannot change the requirements that we get from our client. All the information is on one place and we can make the analysis and the whole project. We can count metrics, analyze traces, analyze impact analysis. Uh, here we have some of our major customers that successfully adopted um, BSC with our enterprise architecture frame. Most of them are defense or science companies Maybe you find yourself here. However, industry starts taking the best practices from defense and moves along. But we noticed that the most experience is generic and does not depend on a particular modeling domain. But don't forget that if we want to adopt modeling successfully, first we need to establish a good modeling culture. And for such reason, I want shortly introduce you four main benefits that we can get from the integration of SystemAL with our enterprise architecture. The first benefit is the risk level of abstraction. The idea of modeling is to be able to define system in more abstract way than it is physical equivalent. It's important to see the big picture. And our architecture framework provides a set of viewpoints to go there. As in this example, we have functional, logical, and physical views. First, we identify functions. When we build a generic logical system that does not depend on the platform. And finally, we build multiple physical models where we can evaluate one against another. We can analyze and see all the systems and their communication about, among them. So we can see the whole picture from the perspective we want. The second benefit is to get uh, different views of our model. There are a lot of cases when diagram is not the best form of visualization. If, for example, if we are making structural breakdown of our system, we usually need to see much more information in more detail. And for such reason, architecture framework provides multiple different forms to represent model data and not only like diagrams. For example, we have tables, as you can see here. We have matrices. We have Gantt charts. Also, we have different predefined or not predefined relation maps. The third benefit is that we have model as a single source of data. Different model access are captured in different formats and usually are not related. And architecture framework allows to have project scope capability requirements, operational scenarios, system designs, software designs in one integrated model. Information is connected in different viewpoints and can be traced. Uh, I hope you remember the system viewpoint. So this one is here and here because this viewpoint we can change with SysML diagrams and SysML model. And the last benefit is that all different roles can work with the same project. 
Usually, SysML is understood and used only among system engineers. However, it's more beneficial to use integrated models involving refinement engineers, software engineers, even product or project managers. So they all have different viewpoints and concerns. Using architecture framework, they can analyze the model from their perspective and to get the information about the model they want. So maybe it's enough to talk about theory. And I would like to go to our practical side of our presentation. And this presentation I will make with our product, Kama uh, Enterprise Architecture. The samples that I am using in our demo, you may find in our product. And you can analyze them. And if you have any questions, you can let me know. So I will switch to our Cameo Enterprise Architecture uh, project. Here we have our sample, Home Appliances Enterprise. As you may see here, we have a perspective of uh, NAV framework. And this project is dedicated to analyze and uh, prepare all the information about home appliances like uh, microwaves, fridges, and similar ones. If you remember, we talked that in enterprise architecture, we are starting from capabilities. So it's the same here. We are starting from vision, uh, where we can define our phases, our goals, uh, capabilities as well. The next step. Once we have information about our strategic level, we can define information in the next level, in the operational one. So here as well, we are defining nodes, uh, connection between them, identifying logical data models, uh, preparing information what kind of actions uh, the nodes are uh, acting, where are they participating. Also, we can analyze uh, connections between our nodes using predefined information, predefined relation maps. And yeah, we have different views from different perspectives. Let's get back to our main floor. Uh, so the next step, when we have our nodes and connections between them, we can model our organization structure. You may see here as well. Uh, I won't go uh, in very detail talking about map because I would like to show you more information about how to integrate Sysama. So the next step is to start modeling uh, our projects. Projects are useful uh, in, in UPDM projects when we want to define how our capabilities will be implemented. So I can see uh, a short diagram. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So what do we see here? We can see here projects, uh, the timeline, our milestones, when we start, what are the stages, what are the perspectives, what tasks are left to be done. And here we come to our system viewpoint. As I mentioned before, this system viewpoint should be, uh, should be or could be changed to our system uh, uh, project. One more thing that I want to show you here is the direction. This process is offered by us how UPDM uh, model should be created. Because some parts, uh, some diagrams are more important, some are less. Some are used for analysis, some are used for creation. So here you can see the full flow, how um, UPDM project and what sequence should be created. So the first uh, possible way to use SysML is to have a SysML compliance mode. This compliance mode 
can be turned on using our project options. Uh, in general project options part, we can type similar SysML and we can turn on our SysML compliance mode. Couple things to mention. Once we say, okay, uh, tool is asking us, do we want to convert our existing elements to SysML elements? Um, so it depends on you and on your project, what do you want to do with your existing element? Uh, all the time you can turn off the SysML mode if you do not want to use it. Now, because this mode is similar, uh, simple, uh, I decided to show you how to model with SysML when we are using uh, our UPDM requirements capabilities as a shared project. So I will put this step and I want simply explain you what I want to do now. Here in our capability viewpoint, we have capability. One of them is our quality control. And I know that uh, our quality control has um, implementation in operational level. Also, I know that it should have implementation in system level. Uh, the simplest way uh, to analyze the relationships uh, um, during different viewpoints, I can use our predefined uh, relation map. For those who are new and maybe didn't see yet, we have new quick diagram um, dialog. And the recent diagrams I can see on the top. Here's the capability structural map. And now I have to choose the context, the start point uh, that I want to analyze. I want to analyze this capability. Okay. I have quite a big structure because this project is not small. Yes. Some of the parts I will shorter. And I see the main view. This part is from capability viewpoint. This part, our node that exhibits capability is quality assurance in operational level. And here I have a big list of software, resource artifacts, uh, also organizational elements that implements this one, uh, our node. What I want to do next? Uh, I want to ask my uh, system engineers to model this particular testing pilot uh, using SysML project. But I want not only to implement SysML project for this um, particular element, but I want also to use more benefits. And one of these benefits is to use measurements that we, that we have in our UPDM project. For such case, I decided that I want to know the price of this testing panel and compare to the price that is defined in our quality control. Uh, the procedure how to define the measurements is here. We can create in our all views viewpoint uh, a, a measurement set. Uh, I already did it. If you want, you can always do it by yourself, and this is a measurement set. And this measurement set has one, in, in this case, only one measurement. This is price. And what's the next step I want to do? I want to say that I'm trying to identify what kind of price should be for defined in our quality control capability. The easiest way is if we have here our quality control, I'm simply taking this element and dragging on our quality control. So, if we go to our specification of double click, we can see all the properties of my quality control. And the property set is already here. It's okay. And at the end of our properties, I can see the measurements. And I decided that the highest price 
that I can afford for this capability is 500. Okay. Okay. The next step is that I want to say that I'm, I want to analyze and count the same price for my testing panel. Testing panel we had here, or we can find it in our containment tree, but I will do that in the simplest way. I will look where this my testing pallet is used. Oh, I see that it is used in testing system structure. Here. Uh, this is a good diagram because, and a good point uh, from Euclidia. Even when we are modeling in systemal systems, usually we have one system and analyzing the internal structure. But in Euclidia, we can analyze all the relationships among our systems and see the main big picture. So it's the same here. This um, part of our model is dedicated to analyze, uh, is dedicated to analyze um, testing of microwave. That's why we are here emission, magnetron, and similar elements. But the most important for me here is our testing path. So I'm doing the same as I did uh, for my capability. I'm treating my measurement set and dragging on the palette. So here I can see that the property set is in place, but the price is not set. Yet I don't know. I'm saying that it's zero, but I don't know because uh, the price should, be, should come and should be calculated in our SSML project when every, all the parts are modeled and we know after simulation with the particular uh, parts, uh, what is the main and the last and the total price of our uh, testing pallet. So right now, uh, the enterprise architect who is working with the PDM project, his, done, his, his job is done. But before that, if he wants to share this project with his SML system engineers, he has to share everything. So sometimes users have problems they, when they are missing some parts when we start sharing because different elements and different relationships are placed in different places of the model. But our tool allows you to identify all misleading situations and collect all elements in one place uh, and to use them as a shared project in our other projects. So let's do sharing. I decided to share all the package. Now I will save my project. And I will share all my package. I'll go to project usages and share packages. Already my package is selected and my, done, my job is done here. I'm clicking OK. I can check for dependencies. If everything is OK, I will get no messages. Everything is OK. Mm -hmm. OK, I will, I will, maybe I will quit this project right now. It's not necessary for me. I want to share all my project. Let's see. Yes, my project is shared. Now what I want to do, I want to create my SSML project for testing palette and define all the internal structure that at the end it would be possible to count the total price of it using our simulation tool. So saving my time, I already have the biggest part of the done of the of this job. I have my project for testing pallet. I've decided to model it here, but I do not have any connections uh, with my UPDM requirements like capabilities, nodes. For such case, I have to use 
the project for my system and I'm choosing my home appliances enterprise project. Oh, it was not selected. Okay. Next. Here in the next step, uh, we do not have to be worried do we have all necessary profiles, parts, or, or similar things. Because when we are sharing the project, all necessary information is collected and imported together uh, when the selected uh, project is, is shared. In the next step, we have two uh, accessibility ways, read-only and read-write. I offer to you read-only because uh, usually when we are sharing the same project among different teams, uh, we do not offer to use it in read-write mode because when you change, your colleagues can get misleading information if you are not up to date. So usually, even if you have your client's project, use read-only mode. Finish. And here we can see our all the structure. It's in gray because we cannot edit. Now, here in SysML, we have already uh, the internal structure of our testing path. And that I was mentioning before, the most important thing is to trace the elements from SysML with elements from Wikipedia. And that we can do, for example, using metrics. Let's say we can create dependence metrics. And here I want to see my elements, UPDM elements that are defining systems in UPDM. In such case, let it be um, resource artifact, like it was my, our testing palette. And here I want to see not resource artifact. Here I would like to see block from SysML, right? Uh, I do not want to have all scope here. I would choose only system viewpoint. And here I want to have coast. coast. And the last, uh, what I have to do, I have to select the dependence criteria. The dependence criteria for connecting uh, blocks and resource artifact, we should use allocate. Those who are familiar with SysML knows this connection very well. I think it should be OK. Yes, and what we will see here? We see the elements from UPDM, even if they are from read-only module. And here uh, in the columns, I can see my blocks. And what I want to do, I want to create relationships among them. I want to see that the relationship will be from column to row, from, from block to the source artifact. And now I'm looking for my, for my testing palette. I found it in the column. Now I'm looking for it in the testing palette in the row from UPDM, and I can create the relationship like this. We are all the time we can check. We can go to the specification and uh, we can go to a specification and see the relationships. And we can see that testing palette is allocated to our testing palette in UPDM uh, in UPDM project. One more thing that uh, we can do here is to make the same uh, impact analysis as we did it in UPDM project. We can create here a simple relation map and say that I want to find my uh, capability quality 
we have lots of quality control. Uh, I want to have criteria. Capability is connected with node using exhibits. Don't forget that we have lots of predefined uh, criteria that you also can use in, in your projects, in matrices, in relation maps for impact analysis. And now I will use simple relationship. Here, yeah, already I can see node. Also, I want to add my resource artifacts using implements mm, relationship target to source. Yes, we can see the same view that we have in UPDM. But now I want to see our blocks as well. So I'm adding allocate action and here in testing palette we can see testing a connected block. What do we already have here in our SysML project? We have not only the structure, but we also have SysML for a magic diagram. This diagram is dedicated for our simulation to count the price. Because we don't have much time, so I already did this counting, and I realized that our testing pilot price is 171. So this information now is the SML project. And usually when we have different projects, when we have variant modeling, this information should, we should bring it to our main UPDM project. So I'm doing the same now. I'm coming back to our enterprise appliances project. And if you remember, here we have our testing element with measurements. So here the price is 171. Uh, sometimes it's not very easy to have all the information like in the element. That's why we have a special view to, not, to analyze quality and it is uh, SV, NSV7 diagram and here I added two elements, quality control and testing palette. This one is from our operational level, uh, sorry from capability level and this one from system level. And here we have measurements. Now everything looks okay. But once we change this price to higher, because we can get some offers when the price is not suitable for us. For such case, we can prepare a, um, a validation rule, if we want to, to analyze and compare. Because when we have two elements, everything is okay. But once we have uh, variant modeling, when we have different structures, different uh, prices, we, it is much easier for us to identify in correct places when we have validation rules. For such case, I prepared here a price validation rule, which helps to identify if the price of our uh, resource artifact is higher or not than the requirement in the, our capability. So here I can simply choose and find our um, price validation rule and start validating. And here we have an error because we decided because it's critical and even here the element is identified that the price is higher than expected. Uh, we can choose what we want to measure, we can choose what we want to more, uh, validate in our projects. I think that my time is at the end, but I still want to show you one more thing. When you are working with projects and when you are using other projects like shared parts, sometimes it's very easy to get uh, confused. So we have, uh, when we are using teamwork projects, we can do the analysis and for that uh, we can use a project usage map like I did here. Yes, I can a little bit fix it to see uh, a better view, something like that and increase the view. What do I have here? Here I have for SysML projects for different 
systems uh, modeling. All of them are using, like, they are like different teams who are working with different systems. All of them are using uh, the same EPDM project. Uh, they can use uh, different parts and work with different capabilities, but here in, in the map I can see whole view. And the global project is dedicated to uh, ha have and analyze on all information in one place. So I believe my time is over for presentations. So now we'll go to questions and answer session. If you have questions and if you have your own projects and different, your own problems, you can always write to our support system and uh, we'll, be, we'll be glad to help you to find, to find those solutions. So I still do you, do we have any questions? Um, yes, we already got one. Uh, let me read it. Um, okay. Which approach to use? to model system in the same UPDM project or in a separate one? Yes, as, as I mentioned before, it depends on your organization and it depends on your project. If you have one team and one project, you may use the system compliance mode. Uh, in the next version, it will be um, that all elements in UPDM will be based on system so it will be much better for our clients because they will get all the functionality in one place. Now, if you are working with different teams, if you get information from your um, clients, like requirements, like a UPDM project is a requirement project, so in such case, I offer you to use some SSMA separate project because you can work in separate teams and have separate projects. Thank you. <laughs> uh, let's proceed with a second question. Uh, do you support other enterprise frameworks? Uh, for example, Toga? Yes. Yes? Uh, could you could you repeat your question? Okay. Um, do you support other enterprise frameworks, uh, for example, Toga? Yes, we have um, uh, a profile for our Toga framework, and uh, we it does not depend which enterprise framework to use. Uh, you can use Toga. You can use uh, NAF, DORAF, or MODA. Everything depends on the process, on the modeling culture that you have in your organization or in your, in uh, like best practices. Sometimes our clients modeling with TOGAF, some of them are modeling with, most of them are modeling with DORAF and NAF frameworks. But the same principles are the same. So, if you want, you can try our free TOGAF uh, plugin, and in the same way uh, to to model SML SML projects. Okay. Uh, we got the third question. Uh, this is a great presentation. Will this be posted on YouTube? And is it possible to get a copy of the model you have demonstrated? Yes, it is possible and video questions and I think the demonstration will manage to put not only on YouTube but also in, uh, in our website. And if you are interested in uh, more information uh, about MBC and enterprise architecture, you may find uh, white papers and um, also case studies from our clients in our web page, nomadic.com slash mbsc. Thank you. Uh, we got another one question. Uh -huh. um, 
what is uh, the difference between Magic Draw and Cameo Enterprise Architecture? Yes, uh, good question. Um, we have Magic Draw as a platform and different plugins, like SysML plugin, UPDM plugin, and if you want to use UPDM, you have to uh, install Magic Draw plus SysML plus UPDM. Sometimes it's not very convenient for our customers, and we want to have everything in one place, and it's much easier for them to organize their work. And here, that's why we have a product, Cameo Enterprise Architect, architecture where everything is in one place. Also, we have different uh, different uh, levels, let's say, like standard architect and enterprise, and some of them uh, have more benefits and capabilities. So the same samples and the same uh, uh, actions you may do using Magic Draw plus SysML and plus UPDM plugins. Okay, let's answer another one. Is it possible to add values to the capability configuration directly in the SysML model? Um, if you are using a SysML UPDM project in the SysML uh, in a read-only mode, so no, because you cannot edit the project. As I mentioned before, yes, you can choose it in read-write, but this mode is, uh, is not maybe correct if you are sharing the same project with your, with your colleague. So it would be much better when the particular information you will add to the UPDM project. You may export your data or your results, for example, from simulation to the Excel, and then simply import that information in your UPDM project and associate it with a particular element. So if you will have more questions, write to us. You have my email or you have also our support. So and, uh, I would like to add that um, all the questions you, you will um, we will ask us later. Will be the uh, answers to those questions will be provided together with the video link of the recorded webinar. Uh, so I guess uh, let's go to the end. Uh, thank you, everybody, for attending the webinar. Thank you, Luna, for interesting presentation, and um, we hope to meet you again next year. Thank you. And have a nice day. Bye.